Uh, hi, my name is Dr. Craig Bellamy, and today I'm going to talk about data and hacking with particular emphasis on um, education. Um, and I'll, I'll look at this from an educational perspective on why we do this, why we um, try to uh, build programs and educate people in the field of cybersecurity. Um, it's a big focus for um, areas of, for, of job ready um, education at the moment and promises to be so into the immediate future. And one of the most creative things about cybersecurity, um, or perhaps the only creative thing, um, is this hoodie guy. Um, it would be great to have an exhibition of hoodie guy in a, in a gallery in, in um, Collingwood in Melbourne or somewhere like this. Um, so cybersecurity's need has risen because has risen because data has grown in uh, use, uh, both as a business process, but but also as a commodity that can be traded. Um, it is it has been called the the gold of the 21st century or the oil of the of the 21st century, um, and honeypots of data can be raided for several reasons. Um, it can be for financial gain, um, uh, such as holding data as a hostage. Um, so uh, the, the, you have to pay the hacker to get the, the data back, such as the case with the National Health Service in the UK. You can resell data, you can steal people's identity, um, you can steal intellectual property, which has been the case in Australia, particularly through um, state-based attacks on uh, universities. Um, or other state-based attacks have been on critical infrastructure, such as power grids, hospitals, uh, water utilities, uh, these sort of things, the critical sectors um, in a society. Uh, but not all hackers are bad. Um, and uh, this, is a, this is a group called Anonymous, a direct action group of hackers that wear the mask of Guy Fawkes. Um, and Guy Fawkes, as you possibly know, attempted to blow up the English Parliament in the 1600s. So Anonymous can't possibly be bad. Um, Anonymous said, says it promotes uh, access to information, free speech and transparency, and supports various anti-corruption and anti-authoritarian movements. Um, Anonymous has been involved, involved in campaigns such as the uh, um, campaign against ISIS after several terrorist attacks in France in 2015. Uh, Anonymous sees control of almost 100 Twitter accounts associated with ISIS and used various hacker tools to hinder ISIS uh, online. Um, unlike black hat hackers, the bad ones, who access uh, systems illegally with malicious intent and for personal gain. White hat hackers, the good ones, generally work with companies um, to help identify weaknesses uh, in their systems and make corresponding updates. They do this to ensure that black hat hackers cannot illegally access uh, the data. So one of the most famous recent high, high profile hacks was on Facebook and hacks um, happen all the time. Uh, this, one, this one hack was caused by Cambridge Analytica uh, in 2016. And Cambridge Analytica was, was a political uh, consulting firm uh, that used the illegally collected data of more than 100 million users for political propaganda campaigns in various countries of the world, particularly the US. Um, Cambridge Analytica, um, or at least uh, it, one of its associates, screen, screen scaped, scraped uh, the profiles um, of 100 million or more profile uh, Facebook users looking for political affiliation. And that political affiliation uh, was used to target those people with uh, particular um, with uh, political pro propaganda campaigns, um, which is which is illegal as well. Um, it could because it disrupts uh, aspects of transparency in, in democracy. Um, so, 
Attacks such as this have enormous consequences for the company involved, uh, such as reputational damage, the loss of a user base. Um, in Facebook's case, it was 3 million people in the EU alone, uh, and financial loss. And, and if it's a public company, such as Facebook, meaning it's listed on the stock exchange, um, the stock market can uh, have substantial losses as well. Um, and in Facebook's case, it was 119 billion US dollars. So a significant amount of money. Um, and this is an image of Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, facing up to a Senate committee in the US um, uh, that wanted to regulate Facebook or, and understand what, what had happened. Um, and not only regulate uh, Facebook, but, but because it's such a large player in the social media space, they wanted to regulate the whole sector. So if you get hacked, you, you not only lose a whole bunch of money, your reputation and possibly end up in jail um, because you haven't followed cyber security protocols. So in some instances, it's probably better to be a hacker. Um, okay. So perhaps not surprisingly, there's a whole bunch of jobs in this area. Um, there's a shortfall of over 7,000 cybersecurity jobs in Australia alone. Um, according to a report from Oz Cyber, um, the Australia Cybersecurity Sector Competitiveness Plan, Australian cybersecurity sector is facing a severe skills shortage, costing the nation more than 400 million in lost revenue and wages, with almost 17,600 additional cyber um, professionals likely to be needed by 2026. And the Minister for Cybersecurity appointed to the new government has highlighted the talent pipeline and education as the top priority. Ooh, the hoodie guy is back again. Um, and this is where we as educationalists, learning designers um, come, come in. Uh, the online, uh, uh, online, online educational courses, which is many available, um, and such as micro credentials, um, they scale well, they are flexible, um, and they're targeted um, towards uh, professionals. Um, they're usually, yeah, they're usually built for adult learners and, and, and professionals. Um, it, many who are already in the workforce, I have people in IT that may have a, a information, a, a broad IT undergraduate degree, um, or they, they already understand project and, and program management. Um, so it, it often doesn't take too many micro-credentials uh, for those individuals to shift into new roles, and those credentials can be uh, recognised by em employers. Um, and, and also, perhaps unfortunately, there's, uh, there's, a, not as, there's not a lot of gender equity in cybersecurity, so the government has a focus uh, through some of its programs to try to get many uh, more females in the field of cybersecurity, but perhaps they need to get rid of hoodie guy to, to achieve this. Um, so to wrap up, cybersecurity is a critical field facing a whole bunch of challenges. And one of them is a lack of skilled workers um, and education and some of the new educational products such as micro-credentials are well placed to um, fill this gap. Th thank you very much today.